Hallelujah. So God alone be all the praise. We are welcome this evening again to the National Restoration Program Altar where we speak for the restoration of our nation and to also prepare the church for the rapture. And uh, we've been on a series of teaching titled 18 Things. Amen. You need or that you can do to escape the coming rot. That is the coming anger. Because there's going to be a rot. Amen. And this rot is going to take it. It's going to take seven years. It's a seven years period of rot. And then we say there's going to be an escaping. One can escape it. It begins with the Antichrist. Having the first three and a half years. And one of our texts has been Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. Revelation 12 6. He said, and the woman was, was given the wind to fly, to escape like an eagle. Into a place that was prepared for her. Amen. And she was there. A place of escape. Amen. And who was she escaping from? From the face of the dragon. And we said, the first point of our escape, why the Lord comes to rapture his, his saints. Amen. The, one of the cardinal reasons, because we have four main purposes of the rapture. I think that video is on our YouTube channel. The teaching I've done before. One of the cardinal reasons why the Lord has to come to rapture his church is because the righteous cannot suffer, cannot perish with the wicked. Bible says, who delivereth us from the wrath to come? He said, and I will keep you from the hour of temptation that will come upon the face of the whole earth. So the Lord is going, no, you know, like he did in the time of Noah, as he did in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is what God is going to do to his elect. Who shall escape? And Paul, speaking about this escape from the road to come, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13, he may say, for you do not have to sorrow like those who are without hope. And he began to be saved between the children of my eye. The trump of God will sound. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are alive will remain. Why Paul said for Because Paul expected that it to happen this time. Just like we are supposed to be expectant any time, any day. Because that, that taking away, that catching away, which we call the rapture, can be any time. And we must not be as the foolish virgin. We must be ready. Our lamp must be, must, must, must be on. And there must be our extra oil. Because he may, he may delay to come. But we don't know exactly when he's going to come. But the fact is that he's going to come. And there is going to be an escape. Amen. As I was praying for my message that I delivered yesterday, but the faith thing, you know, a lot of things kept dropping in my mind. The only thing that dropped in my spirit is this. So the fear of God, amen, has been sacrificed in our generation on the altar of grace. Amen. What happened to us in this generation? The fear of what? The fear of God has what? Has been sacrificed on the altar of grace. Therefore, the Christianity of today is a Christianity without life of holiness. Because one of the things that inspires believers to live holy life, amen, is the fear of God. But that fear has been sacrificed because we are told that grace covers us. Abi, we are saved by grace and because of grace, we cannot lose our eternal, eternal abode with Jesus. So then, how would you fear God again? It's been sacrificed on the top of grace. So there's no fear of God. Because people are what? Are banking on what? What are they banking on? On grace. But alas, it's the work of the Nicolaitans, the Belams and Jezebels. So that's why there's no, there's no holiness again. Holiness today is not an issue because fear has been sacrificed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then, you know, Jesus tell us that we should glorify Paul, speaking to by the Holy Ghost, say we should glorify God in our body. Is that what he said? But you know what happened? That glorifying God with, in our body has been sacrificed. Amen. On the altar of all lips glorification. So our lips glorify God, but our body, the entirety of our body does not glorify God. 
Our character does not glorify God. Our behavior does not glorify God. Our morality does not glorify God. So the thing that glorifies God in us is what? It's only our mouth. If the Bible says you should offer your mouth to God, is that what you say? Is that what you were told in, in, in Romans chapter 12? What did he tell you? say, offer what? Your bodies. Not just your lips. So we feel that we do God by what? By confessing Jesus our Lord and Savior. And then we keep coming to praise God and talk God and talk God. But the whole of our body is not glorifying the Lord. So there's a sacrifice. Glorifying God, our body has been sacrificed by what? Glorify God what? In our what? Yes. And that is why Paul says that they profess that they know God. He said, but unto every good work, he said, they are what? They are reprobate. That is good for nothing. Titus chapter, I think, 1, 16, 15, 16. Amen. And holiness of life, holy living, holiness of life itself, Amen. The, the holiness of life that we saw in the New Testament church, today it has been sacrificed on the altar of carnal devotion, carnal services. So no holiness of life. So what do we do now? Somebody can come and sing, hey, sing, sing, sing. You think that muscle has badata? <laughs> you know what that means? That the Holy Ghost have come. Amen. You see people now singing, you know, it's about packaging. People see people now running to church, you know, jumping to church meetings, you know, they are serving God. We are pastors, we are deans, you know, we are deacons, we are deaconesses, we are choir members, we are praying ba- uh, prayer band member, we are this and that. So, and they are what? We are doing a lot of things. Amen. And you see us doing jamborees. When you come to church and we are praying in seals, we are praying and vibrating, praying in tongues, we are now, you understand what I'm saying, but. Hey, we are fasting, we can fast, we can pray, we can do all these things. So what have we now done? We have sacrificed holiness of life for these activities, these jamborees. So today's, today's Christians, living a holy life is not an issue. What is important is doing jamborees. Can I what? Devotion. Alas, our Christianity today has been corrupted. We are practicing a new brand of Christianity. Amen? What I say we are practicing? A new brand. Fear of God. Sacrifice for what? What is sacrifice for? For grace. And the devil has so much inspired them with so many level, what so many perversion of grace. And we have all manner of teachings today. Amen. And Glorifying God. The Bible says, dear Paul, he said, glorify God. You remember that place? First Corinthians 6, verse, verse, 20, verse 20. He said, dear Paul, glorify God in your bodies. So we don't glorify God about again. The only thing that glorify God is what? Mm-hmm. Our lips. You remember what the Bible told them in Amos chapter 5, 22. He said, I detest your holy days. Let's go there. I detest your assembly. You see, I detest Amos. I didn't. I say Amos five twenty two. I detest your gathering. I hate and abhor your 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 assembly, your sacrifice. Take it away from me. See, you see, your your I your will muse, not accept your burnt offering. I will not accept your burnt offering. Eh? And grain offerings. And grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Mm-hmm. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. Uh-huh. I will not listen to the. Music. Our noise, our praise has become what. Noise to God. You know why? Because our body is not glorifying the Lord. We have sacrificed what? We have sacrificed what? What I sacrifice? Fear of God for grace. And we have sacrificed what? Holiness of life for activities. They were still coming and sacrificing to the Lord. Is that not so? Yes. They were still glorifying God, singing praise to God. But what? Holiness of life had been what? Sacrificed for what? For what? For glorifying God with their lips. That's what we are doing ahead. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Mm-hmm. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, mm-hmm. an endless river of righteous living. Uh-huh. Was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings mm-hmm. during the 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? Mm-hmm. No, you served your pagan God, circled to your king God, and called one your star God. The images you make for yourself. Let me stop there. Let's stop there. Praise the Lord. Let's stop there. Amen. This now brings us to why we are taking our time to do all these dogged teachings. Because we started this journey on 18 things that we can do 
Amen. Or a thing is needed for us to be able to escape. Brother, the wrath of God is coming. The wrath is coming. It starts from the devil. The Lord will allow the devil to do his own part first before he will now come to see the to doom the fate of all who were finally deceived by the devil. But before this program starts, the Lord will take away those who are without spot, those who are without wrinkle, those who are blameless. His church will be taken away before this event will come. Amen. And when you look around, you will understand that there is a pollution, there is a perversion. Today's church has become a Babylon church. And the Lord is calling us to come out of Babylon and be separate because the wrath of God is coming. If you don't come out of this Babylon system, that grace, that grace, that fear has been sacrificed for grace. And what had happened? What did I say have What did I say have happened? I said three things. What the second thing I said? I said grace sacrifice for what? Fear sacrifice for grace. Then what did I say? Uh-huh. Number one. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Glorify. Glorify. Glorifying God with our body has been sacrificed by what? Glorifying God with our lips and our and our what? And our and our, and our substance. You know, we glorify God with our lips and substance. Somebody praise God, give tight, but his life zero. So we now glorify God with our lips and our substance, but not glorify God with what? With our bodies. And what is the third thing I said? I said three things now. You should be able to. You are not noting what I'm saying. So if I didn't even ask you now, you have forgotten what I said just now. So how will you now grow? What is the third thing I said? All of us, you heard me now. I said three things. What was the third thing I said? So if you forget what I said now, so how can you apply it to your life for your profit? Me, who have said it, I have not forgot. I, I wrote this thing down yesterday, have you also? But I can't forget it. No, no, it's okay, I don't. Sometimes, and I would this week or last week, I've forgotten. But I can't forget it. But you like, you're still now, you've forgotten it. I said three things. Amen. I said holiness of life have been sacrificed for what? For carnal devotion. Is that what I said? First I said what? Fear sacrifice for grace. Abi? Number two, I said what? Glorifying God with our body has been sacrificed for what? Glorifying God with our lips. Only lips glorify God. Every other part of the body does not glorify God. Praise the Lord. And I said thirdly, we what? We sacrifice holiness of life. For what? For carnal devotion. Services to God. Singing to God. Dancing to God. We come to God. Amen. So these are what we now do. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we started a journey at the last teaching. We are in part seven of this teaching. And we did seven A. So we are doing seven B. Let's turn our Bible to our text. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 11. We are looking at the second, 11 to 12. Amen. Fast reader, fast reader. Oh, you want me to be reading by myself? Mm-hmm. From verse 11 to 12. Therefore, encourage one another. And build each other up just as in fact you are doing. What do you do? What is it you should do? We should, what? we should encourage one another and we should what? And we should build who? Each other. Even as we are doing. You can see that. Let's talk the praise Lord. And we started the journey last week looking at what does it mean for us to what? To build each other up. Because it must escape the rot to come. What must we do? We must, one of the things we must do, amen, is that we must build each other up. We must do what? Build ourselves up. Very important. Now you say, just as you are doing. But the question is this. Are we truly building each other up today like the early church did? Our Christianity, is it channeled towards building each other up so that we can escape the road to come? And when you look at it, you discover that what we are doing today is far from what we are commanded to do. We are not building ourselves. 
Amen. We're not beating ourselves. And we have seen it from the scripture. We're going to look at it more today. What it means, and I said last, uh, in the last teaching, that the greatest job, the most tedious job of the Christian ministry is not to win souls for Jesus. Mm -mm. It is not to what? It's not to go and do outreach and crusade and people give their heart to Christ. That is easy. And we said here, we established here at the last teaching that the most difficult job or hardest part of Christian ministry is building the convert to becoming a holy temple unto the Lord. Bible says we are the temple of the Lord. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 3, 9, he says, for we are God's building. And we did say last, uh, the last teaching that if you start a building and lay foundation, eh, and you just stop at foundation, is that building, is it useful? It's not useful. So foundation without building it to finish is useless. And that is exactly what we are doing today. And we have not taught people the truth. We told people that once foundation, once the young people have to Jesus Christ, everything is alright with them. Their heaven is sure. It's a life of the pit of hell. To give that to Jesus Christ, a foundation was just laid. And Jesus does not dwell in what? In empty foundation. It is a completed building that Jesus tabernacle in. And we have a responsibility to each other. And we said the church exists to what? As, as, an, as, as, as God's own institution. The, I'm talking about the, the church now as a company of believers. We, we come together. Our cardinal purpose of coming together as a company is to build ourselves up. So when you are in what we call today's church and you are not growing spiritually, you are not maturing in holy living, then you are in the wrong place. It ceases from being the synagogue of God. It becomes the what? The synagogue of Satan. If it is not about the building of the, build, of the convert to become holy habitation, then it ceases from being the temple of the Lord. It ceases from being the gathering of God's children. Praise the Lord. And today we want to look at a few things. How we can build ourselves up. Amen. How are you looking at this? How we can work? How do we go about this business of what? Of building ourselves up. So that we can become a holy habitation unto Jehovah. Amen. Let's see something in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 to 16. Ephesians 4. So the question we are answering today at this last stage of part 7, this part 7b, we did part 7a before this part 7b. Amen. So the question is, how do we build ourselves? That's the question. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 11 to 16. First, will I come close and read for me? Ephesians chapter 4. Now, mm -hmm. these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. Mm -hmm. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Mm -hmm. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, mm. the body of what Christ. What is their responsibility? To equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. And what is the church? Yeah. The body of Christ. What is the church? The body of Christ. So who are we? We are the body of Christ. So why did God give some prophets, apostles, teachers, pastors, evangelists? What, what, is, their, what is their job? Their job is to what? To equip gospel for service and to build them up as the body of Christ. Amen. To equip them for service and to build them up as what? The body of Christ. Hurry down. This 13, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith. This building project, this work of building, when, how do, when, do, when will it stop? When does it stop? It yes. continues until what? Until we all come to such unity in our faith mm -hmm. and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Are you, we are measuring up to whose standard? 
complete standard the complete of Christ. Standard of Christ. Mm. This project continues until we all come to what? The fullness. Mm. The complete standard of what? Who's made? Of Christ. Christ have a standard. So, the building continues so that we can come to which standard? Complete standard of Christ. Christ has a standard. The building has a standard. It has specification. We're not building anyhow. The standard for this building is who? It's Christ. And the work has to continue. Until we all come to what? The full standard. The complete, the measure. He didn't say until we come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Unto a full man. Amen. Amen. We have we have a we, we have we, we have a standard to which this building must be built to. If not that, the building will be rejected. If it is not built to standard, what happens? It will be rejected. <laughs> you didn't finish. Continue. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then we will no longer be immature like children. I hear about there is so much immaturity today. I wonder how we are immature like children. Eh? We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. Are you hearing about? Sometimes they came up, they say it's prosperity gospel. That was the wave of new teaching. That will ravage the whole country. Sometimes they came, they say it is what? It is an eternal security message. That once you are saying you are forever saved. That will ravage the whole country. Sometimes they came, they say that which one again, they even say again. Amen. They say it's fall, fall and die by fire. That will ravage the whole country. Amen. But if you are built up, amen, you, you, you are not going to live in this house forever, I wonder. Maybe at least, let's assume you are here secondary school. University, you may leave this house. Abi? Yes. So when you go to the university and you begin to hear strange teaching, what do you do? Amen. So are you, do you have a standard that you have, you have been built up to? As a sort of fact, we are supposed to come to a level Whereby we now know that this is the standard of life I am supposed to live as a Christian. And you have come to that standard. You are matured. When they bring this one, like, if you like, go and bring any, any message and say, now, you, Revelation, when we finish it, I will, I will weigh it <laughs> to know whether it is in compliance with the standard. But some people don't have such foundation. They are not, they are, they've not been built up. They are not mature. When you come now, I say now apple now they make. If you want, if you want to, if you want to become rich now, now apple now you're supposed to chop. Bring apple tomorrow. Holy Ghost say everybody bring apple to church. They call it apple service. They will go kuruke, kureke, kuruke. One day, Kaduna, I was I just I just met somebody. Before you know, he said he's a prophet. He didn't know who I was. He said, he said, eh. We were just talking. And I don't know what happened. We were talking, discussing. And maybe, okay, we no, it's like, I forgot exactly what happened. But we got to, we got to uh, know, I forgot exactly what happened, that I have uh, female children. She now said, ah, that uh, if you want to give birth to me, you should bring apple. And then they'll pray on the apple. And then once you and your wife eat it, you will now have male children. <laughs> and I look at him. I, I didn't show again, but I remember that he talked about apple, eating apple. And I think you say, or somebody else also told you that you should come to a particular person and pray for you. And then you should, I don't know what they say they will do to you. <laughs> but I look at him. I know those were what? Those were abraka what? Abracadabra. And I knew who he was. He just told me who he was. Amen. God does, does not generalize solution. What I say God does not do? It does not generate solution. If I pray for you, God can lead me to ask you to perform a prophetic action for your case. But if I, if God, maybe let me say, I pray for you now. God asks me, okay, give her a cup of water to drink. Pray on a cup of water to drink. And you drink it and your prayer go. Then I will now go and pray on water. And I give her, say, okay, if you come, this is the solution to your problem now. God is not there. That is not how God works. Amen. God can give revelation. So they now generalize it. No, that is not God. 
But the, 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 the people are what? When they say tomorrow, tomorrow now suya service, now they bring miracle now. They all of them jump to where? Suya service. When they come to the next one, they say now honey service. Now they bring a solution to problem. They rush their group, group. They buy honey. Start honey service. Amen. When they say now you to sleep with pastor, now you go make you get solution. What do they do? They, they, are, they are doing it now. Amen. They say now for you to what? All you need to do for you to get your breakthrough is to sleep with pastor. Women are sleeping with pastor. All manner of things are happening. Do you know why they are doing so? Because they've not what? They've not been built up. You know to help us. Read on. Uh -huh. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. Mm -hmm. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Are you hearing, ma'am? How do they sound? Like the truth. They, they will try to what? Trick us with lies. Trick us with lies. So they came clever. with lie about prosperity teaching. It looks so clever as if it was truth and people were tricked and, and duped into, into it. And look at what is happening in the prosperity churches. Oh, my Nonsense thing happening. Uh -huh. They came yeah. with grace message. And they do people with grace message. And look at the perversion today. Amen. Uh -huh. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Instead, mm -hmm. we will speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. Growing in every way more and more like Christ, mm -hmm. who is the head of his body, the church. Mm -hmm. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Mm -hmm. As each part does its own special work, mm -hmm. it helps the other parts grow. As each part does its own work, what happens? It helps the, other, helps the other part grow. So that the whole body is healthy. The whole body. Healthy. And healthy. growing and mm -hmm. full of love. Love, love. Is that all? Yes. The next one is living and shooting like that. Let me see 16 for another version. My own talks about we are now built up in love. So let me see 16 for men. Fast Fast NIV. Uh, was she not opening before? From mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. From him, the whole body joined and held together mm -hmm. by every supporting ligament. Mm -hmm. Grows and builds itself up in love. Grows and what? Build this up in love. The whole body. As we need each other for what? For our building. We need each other. It's okay. We need each other. You need me, I need you. We you bring your own gift, I bring my own gift. We now what? We grow up together. And that's why I keep saying that you need a community of believers, a company of believers for you to what? To grow, to be built up. Number one. Amen things or how to be built up number one. The building. Building ourselves. Amen. Starts by we destroying the old building. Number one thing. How to build ourselves. Number one, by destroying the old building. Old building. Igbele. Building Igbele must be destroyed. Galatians 2, 17, 21. Amen. If you are there, you can read for me. Galatians 2, 17, 21. But suppose we seek to be made right mm -hmm. with God through faith in Christ and then we are found guilty mm -hmm. because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. I am a sinner if I what? Rebuild the old if system. If I rebuild the old system I already what? I already tore down. Uh -huh. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. Mm. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. My old self has what? Been crucified with so Christ. So if we are going to build, amen, ourselves up, the starting point is our what? The old building must be destroyed. Our old self must be crucified. The old building must be tear, must be torn down. Uh -huh. It is no longer I who live, but mm -hmm. Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for, it's, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. 
Are you hearing about? So my emphasis is what? This building project started by what? Destroying the world. And that is what we are not doing. Many of us, the life we live from the world, we carry into the church. I want to live, want to be built up. It doesn't work. The way you are dressing, the way you are dressing from the world, you want to be dressing it while you are not a Christian. The way you paint your nose, paint your nash, paint your lips. Eh? The way you do everything, you put jewelry, you deplete your skin. The same thing, nothing has changed. This building, if it's going to start, it starts from where? Destruction of what? The old building must be destroyed. The kind of character traits, how you used to insult people, how you used to fight people, correct people, you are still carrying the same life. Nothing. Then you cannot be built into a spiritual house if you continue like that. One of the reasons why it has become very difficult for us to, to build ourselves up is because we have carried, we are still carrying the old life. That's why it's become difficult. And when you want to talk to them about the old life, they'll tell you, the Bible says, thou shalt not judge. Is that all they say? So, the old building must, what, must be pulled down. So that the new building can be, the, it can, the foundation can what, can be built up. On who? On the or prophets and the apostles. And Jesus Christ being what? The chief cornerstone. So why it's become difficult for us to build ourselves all because we have not pulled down the old building. That's why it's difficult. We are still talking the way we were talking before we became believers. We are still maintaining the same relationship we had when we were unbelievers. Praise the Lord. Look at the case, the case of that lady that was killed. That woman that was killed in Mendo State. Is a married woman, yet the boyfriend that they were committing immorality before he married, he still go back, she still go back to that woman to collect money. Every time she collect money, and the man now set her up and kill her to use her for ritual. Praise the Lord. So one of the greatest impediments that is hindering us from building ourselves is because. Most of us have refused to what? pull down the old building. And if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We are, we are built on a faulty foundation. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it's very important. We are not ready to, we are not ready to, to mortify the old man. Like uh, Colossians 3 tells us. Say mortify therefore what? The old man. We're not ready to kill the old man. We're not ready to pull out the old building. Yet we want to become one. We want a new building. It will work. Amen. So there is a need for what? For the pulling down of what? Of the old building. Let's see Gal- I think uh, is it Colossians chapter 3. Let's see from verse, I think from verse 5 thereabout. Talks about it. Even this guy, uh, Ephesians 4. Would he talk about the same thing at the point? Colossians 3. Let me read from verse 4. Let's see what he says. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, mm-hmm. you will share in all his, glo- in, in all his glory. Mm-hmm. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Mm-hmm. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality. Put to what? To death. to death, the word. Sinful, the things. sinful who? Earthly things. things eh? Locking within you. L- locking. Yes. That is L O C K. No, L U R. Okay, L U R. K I N G. Okay. Locking within you, okay. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality. Have nothing to do with what? Sexual, sexual immorality. Immorality. Have nothing to do with it. Nothing. Yeah. Have nothing to do with it. Eh? Impurity, mm-hmm. lust, and mm-hmm. evil desires. Mm-hmm. Don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater. Mm-hmm. Worshipping the things of this world. Mm-hmm. Because of these things, the anger of God is coming. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about yeah. Put to the let me see the way King James put it. Verse 5. King James. King James. Verse 5. Mortify there for your members. You are saying you should come closer now. Do what do you do? Mortify. What does it mean to mortify? 
What does it mean to mortify? To kill. Uh, eh, read on. Mortify them for your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God come cometh on the train of his obedience. So there are things to destroy. Amen. The old man must what? Must be destroyed. The old building must what? Must be pulled down. If not that, the new building cannot commence. Hallelujah. Let's see another scripture. Luke chapter 12 verse 18. Luke 12 18. Luke 12 18. First The Ephesians chapter 4 also talks about modifying the old man so that we can become a new, a new... Luke 12, 18. Mm -hmm. Then he said, mm -hmm. this is what I will do. Mm -hmm. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Mm -hmm. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if you want to build a new building, what must you do? Tear down you must tear down the old. Amen. So there's a need for us to tear down the old so that we can build the new. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two things we must do, amen, in order to build, amen, ourselves up, is that we must give ourselves to praying in the Holy Spirit. How do we build ourselves up? By what? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Prayer builds. Amen. Praying in what? In the Holy Spirit. Jude chapter Jude is only one chapter. Jude chapter 1, verse 20, 22. You see, building up your most holy faith. What do you do? Praying what? In the Holy Spirit. So praying in the Spirit is part of building. And that is why, as a child of God, you must be committed to what? To prayer. That is why here we have different times of prayers. And that was why you saw that in the New Testament church, they were gathering at various points, even the, in, to, for prayers, various times of prayers. Like this, as we have different types of prayer, it's for us to be built up. So prayer builds you up. That is what the Bible says. Have you seen that Jude 20? It says, praying the Holy Ghost, building up your word, your most holy faith. So if you want to build up your faith, if you want to build up ourselves, we should learn to what? Pray together. How do we build ourselves up? We should learn to what? Always pray, oh, pray together. Pray. Remember those days in Kaduna? You know, the time prophecy were coming from different places. That um, you are just running. Pro -pro -pro and leaving your family behind. Because those days I like locking up myself and praying you know? Amen. I would just lock myself up. That's how we were brought up. You lock yourself and pray you know? I wanted to continue. Prophet said, come in that you are running and leave your family. You are running too far. Carry them along. Mm. And that is why we started praying together. I mean, are you not enjoying it today? Mm. Eh? I'm asking you, are you not enjoying it today? Mm. My wife is not, is not answering me. Huh? <laughs> you are right. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> At least, we do morning devotion together. Abi, mm. after my devotion, mm. altar of stay, 9, 9 a.m. Mm. Abi, then, uh, altar of revival. 3, uh, 3 p.m. Yeah. Abby. Then mostly we have a fellowship like we're having this evening. And then also, again, in the night, our uh, prayer of thanksgiving in the night also. Abby, at least minimum of four times. Mm -hmm. Let's say one, and that means from every day, at least in this house, minimum of four hours is dedicated to the Lord. So why are we doing all these things? It's so that we can also, so that I will not just be running and leaving you behind. So that I can drag you. <laughs> <laughs> I will not go alone. I will enter into that into that rest with all of you. Amen. Like Noah entered the ark with his father. So we will all Amen. enter together. Amen. So if they want to agree, I will push them by force. Amen. <laughs> like I try to push you by force. Amen. <laughs> I will put through, put through the rest the drug. Everybody follow me. Oh yeah. Come on, follow me. Paul says, mark them that live as you have us for an example. Say for many of whom I have told you often. You say they are what? They are the enemies of the cross of Christ. 
He said, whose God is their belly? Who mind earthly things? They mind earthly things. He said, he said for our conversion is where? Is from heaven, from which cometh our Lord. And you know, the Bible says, their end is what? Yes. Their end is destruction. So we must drag ourselves. Amen. And they, and they said one thing. The family that prays together does what? Stay together. So as a church, we must fellowship together. And that is why, you see what they did in the New Testament church? The Bible says, day to day, they were moving from where? From house to house. Having fellowship. We need to take communion before you go. So remember, when we finish this night, we will take communion tonight. So that at least she can partake of communion. We didn't take communion on Sunday. Last time. So she can join the communion. Praise the Lord. So we must be built up. Amen. We must follow each other. Amen. So because the Lord will ask you a question. And the first thing that God will ask you a question about is your family. The people around you. How did you build them up? How did you deal with them? So it's about you helping each other. I help you, you would. You help me. You must grow together. So we must carry ourselves together. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So creating time to pray together is, very, is one of the ways that we want. We build up ourselves. Create time to what? To pray together. Communion, you know, you know, group prayer is very good because it helps in building. Amen. To pray alone is okay, but praying together is more important than praying alone. Yes, that is why. Go and check the Jewish tradition. Their prayer was more of a congregational setting. They have times where they come together and pray together. That was all we saw. Amen. They did what? They had a time. They called the hour of incense when they entered the temple to sacrifice the Lord. So, in, in the Bible doctrine, there is a premium value on what? On what? On the on corporate prayer. Amen. That does not mean, I'm not saying the personal prayer is not important though. Very important also. Because Jesus will always withdraw himself to the private and go and pray. Have you done not true? Yes. That is very true. But that does not negate the word, the time of corporate prayer. Corporate prayer is very valuable. Very valuable. Amen. Because that is what helps us to work, to build each other up. And that is why Paul will tell us, do not what? Do not neglect the gathering of ourselves together. Do not. Because we need each other. To pray. And to also, also share in the world. That is why our service together is not complete without prayer. Whenever we come together, when a brother visits a sister, their visitation must end with two, it must culminate in two things. Amen. Number one, sharing of the word of God, and number two, praying together. If I come and visit Sister Rebecca, and I come and visit, I come to die your place and visit you people. And after I visit Jesus, Jesus, I go back. I have not come to be, I have not done anything. As far as heaven is concerned, I'm a failure. So, but when I come, we should share the word of God and what I pray. That means that is when I've invested into your life. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And that was what they did then. And when they finished, they broke bread together and communed together. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Number three, how do we build ourselves up? Number three, I've already started talking about number three also because it's, in, it's somehow related to number one. It's things that must go together. Amen. Number three, amen. Teaching, practicing, and following the apostolic doctrines. This third way to build ourselves up is teaching ourselves, teaching ourselves the apostolic doctrine. What are we teaching? Apostolic doctrine. Amen. What are we practicing? Not teaching alone, no. practicing what? Apostolic doctrine. Amen. And also what? Following the word, the apostolic doctrine. 
Hallelujah. This is the greatest way for us to what? To grow and build ourselves up. That is the greatest way to build ourselves up. Amen. And it's what this invariably tells us is the fact that it is the word of God that builds us up, that we use to build ourselves up. That is what that, that is what it means. And that is why Paul says in Hebrews chapter 3. Remember Hebrews 3, we read it the other day, from verse 7 to, to 19. Paul strictly warned the believers. Let's go there. We need to read it tonight. Hebrews 3, from verse 7 to 19. Very important. Teaching ourselves, exhorting one another, even as it's called today. Practicing and then following the doctrine, the apostolic doctrine. Hebrews 3, 7 to 19. First reader. So as the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion. Mm -hmm. you... During the time of testing the desert, where your father tested and tried me, mm -hmm. and for 40 years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray, mm -hmm. and they have not known my ways. Mm -hmm. So I declared an, an oath in my anger, mm -hmm. they shall never enter my rest. See to his brothers, and none of you has a sinful and believing heart. He said, They shall never enter my rest. So he now says, See to it that what? None of you, none of you have has what? a sinful or believing heart. A sinful or what? Unbelieving. Unbe see to it, brethren. I must see to it that nobody among our company, because said the church is the company of believers, have what? An unbelieving heart or a sinful heart. So if we are not careful, what can spring up? Sinful heart can spring up among us. Unbelieving heart can spring up. That can what? That turns away from what? The living God. Which verse are you now? Verse 13. Okay. Okay. No, verse, you are verse, verse 12. 12. Okay. That turns away from the living God. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. But encourage one another. Listen, you know, listen you know. what do you do? Encourage one another. What day. should we do? Encourage one another. Day. Okay. As long as it is called today, mm -hmm. so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Now, hold on. That encouragement is talking about, he's talking about encouraging him with the word. You see that. Let me see from King James. He say, exhort one another. What do you do? Exhort one another daily. Amen. What do you do? Charge, give, keep, keep, keep giving yourself exhortation in the word every day. Amen. Hebrews 3 13. What do you also wonder? You must warn each other every day. You must do what? Warn each other. Every day we must keep we must warn each other. Eh? Why it is still today. Why it is still today? Warn each other. So that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. And what do you use to warn ourselves? The word of God. Every day we must warn. How do you build ourselves? By using the word of God to what? To encourage or to exhort or to warn. Every day we must keep doing it. That's how to build ourselves up. Hallelujah. That is the way to go. We must make it a daily affair. We can't read it. You can read the remaining one when you have your own time to verse 19. Amen. So that none of us will what? Will fall by the deceit of sin. And be hardened. So we need to keep exhorting ourselves, keep warning ourselves by the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not fail our assignment to each other in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must keep encouraging each other, warning each other from the word so that we will not be hardened because sin is deceitful. Sin is what? Deceit. You know, that is why the rapture preparation fellowship is a daily fellowship. Like the early church in Acts chapter 2 and chapter 3. Amen. That is why we must what? We must stay closer or in a cluster. Amen. And those far away can connect by what? By social media. Hence, the vision of the rapture daily devotional. As 
Amen. So we can. So there is an, an urgent need for the rapture company, those who believe in rapture, to come closer to their self, to form clusters. So that we can what? We can be close to what? To encourage each other every day. And then we are trusting the Lord that the convert center, which is the city of refuge, amen, we, we, we metamorphose as time goes on to become a rapturous city where the remnant of believers, amen, those who really want to make the rapture, we will be closer to each other so that every day we are hearing the pure word of God. And those who are in the diaspora who are far away, like we are doing now, you know, when I finish preaching now, I put on, on YouTube and on Facebook that people who are far away can watch from the part of the world so that they can watch. That is why the rapture day devotional came to be. You know, it started initially, I was doing it with audio and secret of media, but later it graduated from just audio to become what? To become like more or less like a video or uploading today on the YouTube. So that anywhere you are in the world is a daily devotional. And each day we take one chapter of the Bible and read and what? And, and share how God inspires us to share. And what is it targeted at what? Is to what? Is to exhort one another. How many, how many days? Every day. So that none of us will what? Will be deceived. Through the word, the deceitfulness of sin, none of us will be, will be carried away by sin. Will be hardened because sins harden people. Once he brought out, he starts start committing sin. He, he start getting hardened. And then you know what? The, one of the things the devil does when somebody starts living in sin, the devil wants to isolate him from where, from the company of true believers. And that is why you see them. Maybe if they are in a good church where they preach about, they warn about sin. They preach. Hot message. You know what they will do? They will stop going to that church and look for a worldly prosperity or eternal security church and go there where they will not hear something that will break their heart. They will hide it. And that is why if you look around today, the genuine churches where they preach the raw gospel, it's as if they are not growing. Do you know why they are not growing? Because people don't want to hear the truth. So people are running away from those churches. I beg. They want freedom. And I told you, there is no liberty anywhere for anybody. Mm-hmm. It's not a slave of righteousness, it's a slave of sin. If you are not a slave of righteousness, you are automatically a slave of what? A slave of sin. So people don't, that is why those churches, and the pastors are boasting how they are growing. One of them came and said, he said, eh, they say we have no presumption, but now they have been put to shame that evident is a, is a proof. What is he preaching? Prosperity and worldliness. And people are jumping there. And Yahoo boys, prostitutes are all, all there. Every Kahari goes there. The church of God is not for everybody. It's a company of those who want to make heaven. It's a, it's what? It's a preparation ground. What is the church of God? A preparation ground. And we need to close gap. The believers, those who believe in this truth, who really want to make the rapture, we need to be closer to each other so that we can be hearing things that word that encourage us to live holy life every day. We need to hear the truth. Not where you go. Everything you are hearing is, is about how to make it here. And by their messages, their word, the minds of people have been corrupted. And the seed of greed and covetousness has been sown to the people's heart. So that an average young person today or average person today in those churches, his target is miracle visa. His target is, is what? Is how to jackpot. How to get breakthrough, how to get miracle car, how to get miracle money. That is their target. And when the devil flip on them, small opportunity, they jump at it. That Papa said, is my week, is a week of breakthrough. And they do and they compromise to get that thing they want to get. By so doing, they've entered the trap of Matthew 20, Matthew 4. The devil said, Jesus, if you bow down to me, I will give you what? The glory and the resources. So, and God is giving them riches. And they are coming to say, right? since I enter this, uh, this uh, ministry, God has blessed me. I have become prosperous. Go and check their life. They were better off with God before they came to that place. Now, they don't have any stand again. They are chaffs waiting to be blown away and sieved and thrown and discarded in hell. Hallelujah. So we must exhort ourselves. Why is it? Why do we go to try must we exhort ourselves every day? So that we will not be hardened through what? 
the deceit. The issue here is about so that we will not be hardened. The message you hear in your church, let me ask you a question as you listen to this message online. In what way have you, have it helped you so that you will not be hardened by sin? Have it really helped you to live a holy life and a righteous life? That's the question. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord is strengthen us in Jesus. Let's see more scripture. Amen. Amen. Okay, we even read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20 to 22 before. Amen. Where it talks about what? How we need to be built up upon what? The foundation of what? Of the apostles and the prophet. Jesus Christ being the chief corners. We read that before. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 13. Let's see that one. First Corinthians 3, 9 to 13. And then Romans chapter 15, verse 20. First Corinthians 3, 9 to 13. Mm-hmm. For we are God's fellow workers. Mm-hmm. You are God's field, mm-hmm. God's building. Mm-hmm. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, mm-hmm. and someone else is building on it. By the grace who gave me? Which God has given me? What am I doing? I laid a foundation. For what? As an expert builder. And who is doing what? And someone else is building on it. Okay. But each one should be careful how he builds. Each one should be what? Careful, careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid. But they are doing so now. Which is Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, mm-hmm. costly stones, wood, hair, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. Hey, man. The work will be shown for what it is. So whatever they are used to build, it does not. It may not matter to you now, but it will matter tomorrow. Because the work will, work, will be revealed. Uh-huh, continue. Because the day will bring it to light. Mm-hmm. It will be revealed with fire. Mm-hmm. And the fire will test the quality of each man's work. Hey, man. The quality of the work, the, the work we are doing will be what? What will test it? Fire will test it. Eh? If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Okay. Don't you, don't you, don't you know that you yourself are God's temple, mm-hmm. and that God's spirit lives in you? Mm-hmm. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. His word is holy. Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he's wise, by the Let's time... Let's stop the question. Let's stop the question. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 20. So every minister, pastor is building. And the building shall be tested. The law, God's law was given mm-hmm. so that all people could see how sinful they were. Mm-hmm. But as people sinned more and more, mm-hmm. God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death. Where are you reading? You say Romans 5.20. No, I said 15.20. You said 5. No, okay. It's 15.20. Then. 15.20 says, My ambition has always been to preach the good news mm-hmm. where the name of Christ has never been heard mm-hmm. rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. Mm-hmm. I have been following the plan spoken of. Now, 20. That's verse 20. Mm-hmm. Let me see another version. There's something I'm going to do. Let me see from King James. Here, so have I strived to preach the gospel, mm-hmm. not where Christ was named, mm-hmm. lest I should build upon another man's foundation. Paul say, lest I should build, build upon another man's foundation. So, the ministry of Paul was about what? About building. The ministry is about what? Building. And Paul said, let's add build on another man's word. Foundation. So, this ministry is about what? Building. Amen. Amen. And let's look at Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Let's look at what he used, Paul used to build. What was it that Paul used to build? Acts 20, 32. Acts 20, 32, first, if you have seen it. Now I commit you to God mm-hmm. and to the word of his grace, mm-hmm. which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. What is it that can build you up? How do we build ourselves up? With what? With the word of, With the word of his grace that can build us up. 
and give us what? An inheritance. So what builds up his word? If we want to build ourselves up, we must give our we give attention to what? To the word of God. Let's look at what Colossians, Colossians 3 16 says. Let me Colossians 3 16. Yeah, but you are carrying lights. Oh yeah, first read now. You are not opening Bible and you are carrying lights. What kind of laziness is that? That is spiritual laziness. Colossians 3 16 from verse 16. It's a popular scripture. You know it off head. Mm -hmm. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Let what, what dwells in you? The word, the word of Christ. Christ. Because that is what you use. That is the building material. As you teach and admonish one another. As you do what? What do we do to one another? We teach and we, as we teach and admonish. With all wisdom. With all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, mm -hmm. hymns, and spiritual songs. Mm -hmm. With gratitude in your heart to God. What do we do to build ourselves up? They, as we teach, we must teach and admonish each other with word, with the word, so that the word of God can dwell in us. How richly, and that is how we are built. I say, and what he said, I commend the word by example to build. It is that word that they, we teach and admonish ourselves. That word that builds us up into a spiritual temple. And let's see what the word of God does. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, 20 23. Let's see what, how, how it works. Ephesians 2, 20 23. If you like, you can even no, start from, I think start from either 16 or so. Let me see from 16. And in his one body, mm -hmm. and in this one body, mm -hmm. to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, mm -hmm. by which he put to death their hostility. Mm -hmm. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Mm -hmm. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, mm -hmm. but fellow citizens with God's people mm -hmm. and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Built on which foundation? The yeah, foundation of what? Of the apostles and prophets. Uh -huh. With Christ Jesus himself mm -hmm. as the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. In him the whole building is joined together. And rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. We rise to become what? A holy temple unto the Lord. Amen. All via what? The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will strengthen us to give attention to the word. Amen. Because that is where the building are. Hearing the original word of God, not not this this fine tune, this modernized gospel they are preaching, this perverted pollution gospel they are preaching. I mean, let's see some few scriptures to round up tonight. Let's see Haggai chapter one verse eighteen, Habakkuk two twelve, and then Micah chapter three verse ten, and then lastly Amos nine verse eleven. Amos nine. No. That was the last one you should read. Read the one I quoted first. Haggai chapter 1, 18. Habakkuk 2, 12. And then Micah 3, 10. Read Haggai 1, 18 if you are there. Haggai 1, 19. Are you sure? Yes. What which verse does he have? 15. Read 15, let me see. Or read 2. I read two, let me see one of two. Two does two have eighteen? Yes, from the from this day on, from this twenty twenty fourth day of the ninth month, give careful thought to the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Give careful thought. Read it, let me see. One eight. I got one eight, let me see. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber. Okay, it's one eight. And build the house. So that I may take pleasure in it and be humble. It's one, it's Haggai. What do you say you should do? Go, Go up to where? To the mountain. And bring what? Timber. And do what? And build a house for me so that I can be honored. <laughs> so God wants to be honored. And what is the timber we should bring now? The word of God is the timber we should bring. Amen. Amen. What beauty, people of God, is not, it's not wood now. Because we are building a spiritual temple. It is what? The word of God that we should bring 
so that the house of God can be built. Then Habakkuk 2.12. 2, 2, mm -hmm. What sorrow awaits you who build cities mm. with money gained through murder and corruption? Hmm. Hmm. And that is what a lot of people are doing. They are building cities through, through dubious means. Then Micah 3.10. Either Micah or is it Micah or Malachi? Check Micah 3.10 first. Micah 3.10. Mm. You are building Jerusalem okay. on a foundation of murder and corruption. Hmm. We are building with wrong foundation. And that is why they had no profit. And that is why the nation was destroyed. Amen. We will not build on wrong foundation in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. Then lastly, Amos 9-11, where we are marching. Day, mm -hmm. I will restore David's falling tent. Mm. I will repair his broken places. Mm. Restore its ruins and build it as it used to be. Amen. Amen. May the Lord restore the broken church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our prayers are the Lord will restore the broken church. The church has been ruined. Amen. And you know, the, the temple of God is, is, the, is the believers in Christ, Abby. They've been ruined. But the Lord is going to restore the believers back. Amen. And that is why we must go up and bring what? Bring timber. What is the timber we're going to bring up? To restore God's heart, the word of God. So it is time for us to give more attention to, word, to God's word. Soak ourselves. Because it is what you have that you give. May the Lord bless us tonight and forever. And all that these things in the name of Jesus. Come and begin to pray. Lord, help me, O God, to go up and bring wood, bring timber, so that the broken wall of God's temple can be rebuilt. Lord, use me to build your temple. Use me to build holy habitation for you. Because it takes all of us to build. We must be involved. Sister, our sister there is there with the children there. Sister, as you are going back to that place, you must go back and what? Develop a time to teach those children the word of God. Build them up, sister. God, you are not there to give them food alone to eat. Go back there and go and build them. Put the word of God inside them. Build those children up, man. It is not by food, by drinking tea and drinking and giving them head knowledge that they will be built up. What shall it profit us if we feed those children, send them to university, and they grow up and, and then they end up in here? Is there any profit? No. It has become vanity. So as you are there for a moment, go back there and go and disciple those children. God is giving you assignment that are going back. The assignment is go back and go and what? Build them up with what? With the word of the Lord. And the Lord will strengthen you as your assignment increases in that place. The Lord will give you strength. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the strength to bring the timber. Each time you stay to study the word of God, you know what you are doing? Each time you open your Bible to read, you know what you are doing? You are bringing timber for building. That is what you used to build your life and build others. Ah, let's pray, Lord. Help me to bring timber. What you are saying, Lord, help me to stay more on your word. To grow appetite for your word. Help me to go up. When you open your Bible, you are going up to bring timber for building. Lord, give me the appetite, the strength to go up. When you go to church, you are going up to bring timber to build. To build yourself up, Lord. Lord, help me, O oh God, not to be tired of going up to bring timber. To build your temple up. Hey, paradosh. Lord, help me to continue to go up to bring timbers. I will not be tired of going up to bring timbers. Leko Sakarabadi. Help me to study to show myself approved. Kalido Sakataria. To give attention. Peter says in Acts chapter 6, he says, We will not serve tables, but we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and that of prayer. Because that is the only way they will build the people up. It is the word that build. Jesus told Peter in John chapter, I think 20 or so, 21 or 21. He said, Love us more than this. He said, Feed my sheep, feed my word, feed my lamb. That is the way to build. It is by feeding the flock with the word. Paul says, I have dedicated these three and a half years. Day and night, I have not ceased to teach you God's work. In order to build you up. Kalido Shamaradish. Go for me if I do not know you. You workers of iniquity. 
Those who were doing Christian services, but yet they were not built up into holy habitation. They will be rejected on that day. We know that for sure. Lord, we pray. Lord, help us to be built up to you and for you as holy habitation. Holy habitation. In the name of Jesus. That will not be rejected on that day. Will not be rejected. Lord, but will be among those that you say, come into the joy of that. That faithful servant. That shall be a portion. We will escape the wrath to come by the chariot of the rapture. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Because we shall be among those who you are coming for. Those who are without spot. Those who are without wrinkle. Those who are blameless before you. That is where we belong. Help us in this project. As we continue, Lord, help us, O God. That will grow unto you. Unto your fullness. To the standard of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Take the glory, Lord. Take the honor. Take the adoration. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cover says with the blood. The Lord bless you. I remain your brother, Musa George Enemy, God's special national restoration program. If you are blessed by this teaching, don't forget to, you know, you know, drop your let us know how you feel by you know liking, you know, pressing the like button and then also subscribe. If you're not subscribed. And I want to urge you, if this message has blessed you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it to others. And the Lord will bless you richly in the name of Jesus. Shalom and God bless you. Till we meet again. See you at the part 8 of this teaching. God bless you.